What's going on, everybody? Welcome to an NFL recap of the Monday Night Football game for Week 11, 2016. For the second time in NFL history, the NFL, the NFL game was played in Mexico City, and it was very, very exhilarating, except for the lasers that was pointed at uh, Brock Osweiler's helmet several times. Even though he says that that had nothing to do with, you know, with them, you know, eventually losing the game, allowing the Raiders to come back. I'm going to touch on a couple of things that I saw, uh, and I would appreciate if you guys leave your feedback as well. Uh, first of all, I think it was great for the NFL to be uh, in Mexico City. I don't think they've shown uh, Mexico a lot of love over the years, and it's something that they definitely should be doing a little bit more often. Now, let's get to the actual gameplay. Jadavion Clowney, listen, with the arm brace and everything, he just looked like a black J.J. Watt last night. And I was very happy for Houston Texans fans because um, I'm going to touch on Brock Osweiler in a second. I've been very, very hard on him. Um, since the beginning, from him, you know, from him leaving the Denver Broncos and going there and starting off, you know, playing rather pedestrian, I've had issues with him. But I'm going to touch on him as well. Then we're going to get to the Raiders. So, first of all, Jadavian Clowney was very, very impressive. They could not block him. He was everywhere. There was a lot of pressure continuously up the A gap when he played off the edge. It was, it was what they drafted him for. And you know, when you get a return on your investment, it's always great. I was very, very impressed, and I think with him playing like that, I first of all, J.J. Watt, when he comes back from back injury, just so you guys know, uh, a back injury is a very, for a man, woman, whoever it is, I'm an animal, back injuries are very, very dangerous. You talk to any physical therapist, any doctor, it's almost impossible to come back and play a position like what, you know, like J.J. Watt plays, where he's down and bent over every play, and to be successful doing that. So. When I say it, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, hateful or like not have hope. A back injury is very, very dangerous. And I, even with J.J. Watt, I don't think he will ever play the same. Will he be better than every average uh, defensive end? Absolutely, it's J.J. Watt, one of the greatest to ever do the, you know, ever play that position. But the back injury is de definitely going to hinder him. Um, I know uh, Demarcus Weir has had back injuries in the past, and. You know, although he's won a Super Bowl last year, he was very, very effective. It's a very difficult injury to recover from. But I'm going to tell you this much. Jadavian Clowney, when J.J. Watt comes back next year, mer you know, Merciless, these boys, they got to... Yeah, I don't know if Vince Wilfork will still be there or whatever. Um, but that D-line, if Jadavian Clowney can play like that, man, like that, it, it really turned into a game where I just wanted to watch him play. And I'm the type of I'm a you know I'm a defensive type of player. I, when I played football, I played defense. It, it's it's very very um, exciting to see that young man play like that. And you're gonna be hard on him when he doesn't perform because he's the number one pick and stuff like that. We all remember his college hit where the dude helmet fell off, and um, you know off that hype he was able to ride that through to be the number one pick. And he just. He just he just wasn't himself. He was injured. A lot of different things happened, and people were just waiting for this to happen. But I don't know if it was Mexico City. I don't know if it was the Hot Mamas. I don't know what he was doing. But I'm going to tell you this right now. This dude was out there balling, and it was very, very exciting to watch. And I just want to say, man, for you Houston Texans fans, you're going to have to deal with Brock Osweiler for however long. But that you, you guys got a bright future defensively, um, you know, as far as J.J. Watt goes. And they could put some pieces around him. I really like what I'm seeing over there. Now, Brock Osweiler, he played well. This is one of my first recaps where, look, I I bet the Raiders to win this game, okay? And I bet the Raiders to win this game solely because of the fact they were playing Brock Osweiler. Now, I know there were some calls where possibly, you know, you know, uh, Hopkins probably was in bounds, he was, whatever, I don't care about that. Overall, Brock Osweiler played very, very well uh, compared to what he has this entire year. So. Even though in past recaps, uh, past podcasts, I've been saying, you know, the guy sucks. I still think that he does suck, but he played very, very well, and he deserves credit for yesterday. Now, the Raiders, they came out lackluster. Uh, there was this one, there was a one play, like, right at the second half when it first started, where Derek Carr just came out and threw a pick, because Jadavion Conner was just right up the middle with everybody else. Um, I didn't like that too much. That really bothered me, just looking forward for the Raiders, because... I'm trying to figure out if they have enough, if it comes down to it, to be able to compete, to go far in the playoffs. And those type of errant throws, that's an issue for me because you can't make that decision. So I'm very, very, like, I'm trying to critique it because I really, look, man, I want the Raiders to do well just because the Raiders have been bad for so long. And it's just like, all right, let's change it up. Let's put somebody else there. And 
I like the Raiders. I've always liked the Raiders. Maybe because of John Madden. I don't know. But I've always liked the Raiders. Probably Al Davis also. Because he just dropped everybody that was fast. He didn't care about anything else. He just wanted fast players. He had a vision. And he he, he was actually a, a, um, a genius before his time. Because the NFL has always been about speed. And that's what he really focused on. It was just that... I don't know if it wasn't the right coaching and things like that, but everything wasn't able to be put together for it to come, to, you know, for it to come to pass. But he had a very, very good vision. It just didn't work out well for the Raiders for a long time. But Amari Cooper and these boys, Crabtree is playing very, very well. I didn't like that he dropped that touchdown. That it, it was a dot, bro. But he, you know, whatever. Let's not get into that. I'm just gonna. I'm talking about specifically um, offensively with Derek Carr because that's where it all starts. That's where you have to win. Or, the Raiders offense has to continue to be explosive and that's a key their defense I think is gonna handle themselves I think they got enough defensively to be able to you know stay with any team but offensively they can't make those mistakes where you know Derek Carr just says you know what, I'm gonna throw this pick or what you just can't make those errors though those are very very serious things that can cost you the game now in the same token they were able to rebound and come back and win the game anyway you know what I'm saying like even because I think with with the way that the Texans were playing, I don't know if they were playing above their level of play, but they looked early on like the better team, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that, like I, I was having a couple bears, things were happening, but they looked like the better team. And it was some things that were, they were doing and they were able to actually logically look like a team that can compete. Because when I look at their record, and their record is kind of deceptive, because they're, you know, they're above 500 and they're, they're doing well. You know what I'm saying? They, it just doesn't make sense. But then you look at the teams that they've played and it kind of works out. Because as pedestrian as Brock Osweiler has been, they've been able to manage somehow, some way. You know, defensively, whatever they're doing, it's working. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not the offense that's been making them win the games. Let's just be honest about it. But that's why I touch on what I touched on to start off with Jadavion Clowney. Because... With his speed and his strength, it's a very difficult thing for offensive linemen to do. You don't know what he's going to do. He could just throw you to the ground or spin move you or do whatever he wants. That, that, that's a very dangerous thing. For anybody that's ever played football offensively or defensively, you know what that's like. And for guys that watch it and the females that watch it and listen to my recap, football is the kind of sport where if there's one guy defensively that is giving the line problems, and you start mixing and matching, you do a couple stunts, blitz off the edge, not, you know, you don't blitz, you do a zone blitz, drop a guy back and that one, you know, it starts to get, every everybody starts to get crazy. Because that, it's, when JJ, it's sort of like this, just think about it like this. JJ Watt was like MVP for several years, whatever, like defensive MVP. He was able to just go, just throw you to the ground and just go right to the quarterback. Like, oh, oh, he's right there behind you, I'm gonna go see him. That is a very difficult thing to deal with. And all I'm saying is this, with two guys doing that same exact thing, that is a problem. The Houston Texans will be a problem. If Jadavion Clowney can maintain it, man, I, I would just, like I said, the Texans, a lot of people have been down on the Texans. I have too. I think they made a huge mistake by giving uh, Brock Osweiler that much money, but that's besides the point. Whenever I see something that I, you know, I think can help a team elevate, I want to make sure that my point is given because I'm gonna, you know, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I'm usually right about this type of thing. If he is able to do what he just did yesterday and be the black J.J. Watt, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know exactly what else you can do to block those guys, even with J.J. Watt having a back injury, coming back from it, and playing average. That is a very difficult thing. All they would have to do, seriously, is figure out who their quarterback is going to be because Brock Osweiler has to be able to utilize even though they showed the stat where he's getting his tight ends more involved, DeAndre Hopkins is a stud. And he usually overthrows him or throws the ball out of bounds. It just, he just does dump. He's not accurate. He has to work on that. If he's able to do that and somehow, some way, their offense is able to be a little bit more prolific, the Texans can be a major problem. And when I say major, like, like real, like serious, like they defense we know that defense wins championships championships but right now with the way that offenses have just been putting up points they just need to be able to put up at least you know 20 21 to 25 points and their defense play like that when jj watt comes back and everybody is you know is, is clicking like that look man i wouldn't want to play him if, if i'm in the nfl because it's a yo J, yo listen man this wasn't college david connor was putting grown men on the ground yesterday that's a very serious thing. So once again, I want to thank the NFL for going to Mexico City, show Mexico some love. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it out there. All the fans around the world uh, enjoyed that gameplay. 
I'm going to see you guys next time. Definitely subscribe, download this podcast on iTunes, Android, and go to G Myers World. One love.